For today's presentation, I chose an artist with a strong Chicago connection. Stanisław Szukalski, also known as Stach of Zwarty, meaning Stan from the town of Warta in central West Poland, where he was born in 1893. He was nearly completely forgotten, but in recent years rediscovered thanks to Netflix documentary, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Glenn Bray, who keeps on saving and popularizing artists' legacy. He was 10 years old when he came to Chicago with his family in 1907. He was immediately discovered as a child prodigy with exceptional talent in sculpture and drawing. It was suggested by a Polish sculptor, Antoni Popiel, uh, who lived here in, in the US, that he goes to Kraków to the Academy of Art. And he did. He studied for two years under Professor Konstanty Laszczka. Laszczka's sculpture, Opuszczony, Deserted, one of the most famous sculptures in Polish art, is also on display at the Polish Museum. In 1913, Szukalski returned to Chicago and enrolled at the, at the School of the Art Institute. Here, in the class of Professor Charles Mulligan, he created two sculptures that are in our collection today. They are important for several reasons. First of all, the Polish Museum is the only institution in the US that has Szukalski sculpture, sculptures available on public view. Second of all, this year, 1913, is very significant. Uh, it starts the most important period in Szukalski's artistic development. Uh, this period runs until 1923, when he left Chicago. Both sculptures are also very personal. This is the third reason why uh, they are so important. One is a portrait of, of his father, and the second one is a self-portrait. My blacksmith, or my blacksmith father, uh, accessioned in our, in our collection of, as the head of my father, was created in 1913. Uh, it is a plaster model. And uh, Szukalski uh, regarded his father as the most important person, the most influential, inspiring figure in his life. It was in his blacksmith workshop that he started playing with tools and uh, discovered creative process for himself uh, at an early age. Uh, Szukalski depicts his father as an older man uh, with face uh, etched with deep wrinkles, balding head with curly hair all around the lower part of his head, long triangular beard, long mustache. It is a face of a wise man. His head is turned to his right side, eyes cast downwards a bit, sort of looking inwards in a meditative state. You might say, you might imagine a film of his life going in front of his eyes. When Szukowski made the sculpture, he recalled later he had a feeling his father didn't have much longer to live. And this premonition turned out to be correct, because he died soon after in a tragic car accident when he was walking here in Chicago uh, to meet his son at their Sunday walk in the park. Szukowski discovered the body surrounded by a large group of gawkers. And here comes in this tale that he, um, that he would tell when asked, when did you, where did you learn anatomy so well? He would say, my father taught me, insinuating that he actually uh, learned on his father's body in the morgue, just like Renaissance artists uh, like Leonardo or Michelangelo. Now, we don't know if this is just a colorful tale that he spun to embellish his biography. Um, it is also um, very likely that he learned anatomy while working at the butcher shops. He often uh, didn't have enough to provide from his, for himself. He uh, didn't eat enough. Dionysus Szukalski was uh, only 55 years old when uh, he was depicted in this portrait. Uh, 
he was uh, not just a blacksmith, he was revo revolutionary and he largely influenced uh, Szukalski's views. Uh, the reason why he was such a rebellious spirit, he rebelled and had conflicts with Professor Laszka in Krakow, with Professor Mulligan at the Art Institute. He had two solo exhibitions at an early age in 1916 and 1917, and both ended with scandal uh, that was uh, written about in uh, Chicago newspapers. Uh, he in, became this incredible, incredibly important figure uh, in the, among uh, modernist uh, movements in Chicago. He created them. He was a part of the Chicago Renaissance. Uh, he was a part of the Del, Del Pickle Club, uh, No Jury Society. Uh, he socialized with uh, the greatest uh, among them, Ben Hecht, uh, Clarence Darrow, um, Carl Sandburg. It was a short, only 10 years spent in Chicago, but they were these really formative years and he put his stamp on the art history of Chicago at that time. Stanisław Szukalski created his self-portrait uh, in 1913. Uh, in our collection, it, is, it has been accessioned as self-portrait as Copernicus. When you compare photographs of Jan Szukalski with depictions of the great Polish astronomer born, uh, born in uh, Toruń, Poland, you'll see an uncanny resemblance. Szukalski depicted himself uh, as a very strong character, which he was. Uh, he has very clearly defined features, large nose, uh, beautifully carved lips, uh, deeply set eyes. The head is turned to the right, just in the portrait of the father. But here, the head is held high. You see the strong chin, strong jaw, deeply set eyes are looking forward into the future. Uh, his hairstyle, uh, very flamboyant, uh, he has wavy hair uh, with short parted bangs in the front, uh, a little longer at the sides and at the back. Uh, you might say a renaissance uh, hairstyle for men, uh, which brings him one step closer to Copernicus. Szukowski was very much enamored with the figure, with Copernicus, with the astronomer. Uh, he valued scientific research. He himself, for years, created very complicated theories uh, that he um, tried to prove right. Um, there are original letters in the uh, archives here at the museum. Uh, a collection of letters written to Mieczysław Hyman, uh, first curator, um, asking him about certain details that he needed for his research, for his uh, theories. The topic of Copernicus uh, comes back uh, many times in, the, uh, in Szukalski's creations. Uh, we have several objects here in the museum um, connected with this topic. We have the medal um, that was uh, the only object that was displayed at the Polish Pavilion during 1939 New York World's Fair. Uh, this medal is based on an earlier design uh, that was uh, uh, designed for 100 slot coin from 1925. Uh, this coin was never produced, uh, uh, never mass produced, but there were some trial coins made and uh, they are very coveted on the numismatic market today. Uh, gold coin going for as much as 180,000 uh, zlotys, that's around $50,000. Uh, the medal that was at the New York World's Fair was also shown earlier in 1937 at the, ex at the International Exhibition in Paris. Now, we also have a lithograph uh, from 1940, uh, Copernic, uh, which is based on 1936 project of Duchtenia. Uh, we also have a stamp made for f 500th anniversary of Copernicus' uh, birth. Uh, celebrated in 1973. Uh, we have a collection of envelopes inked with that stamp. We do have a poster with a monument of Copernicus that uh, Szukalski created for mm, the same uh, anniversary. It's Copernicus harnessing the sun. Um, 
And uh, the letters that I mentioned in uh, Szukalski's beautiful handwriting, uh, the alphabet that he created, uh, there is a collection of letter ex letters exchanged with Leonidas Dudarev Osetyński. Uh, he was a theater and film actor. Uh, he was a scholar, professor, uh, world traveler. Uh, he collected art and was friends with many artists. And he uh, exchanged a series of letters uh, with Szukalski about that 500th anniversary. Um, he invited uh, Szukalski to speak. Um, he created all these projects, and, uh, and uh, this is how they marked that big anniversary. I should also say that um, after the period of time Szukalski spent in Poland, when World War II broke out, he returned here to the United States, but not to Chicago. He settled in, in California, he lived in Burbank, and that's where at the end of his life he was discovered there by a group of uh, um, uh, artists, young artists, that were enamored, uh, uh, were just uh, um, very much influenced, admired his uh, creations, listened to his stories. Uh, and in that group was uh, Glenn Bray and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's father, Giorgio DiCaprio. To end on a high bright note, I cannot reveal too much, but I have to tell you that the museum is currently entertaining a larger Szukalski project. So please stay tuned, follow us on social media, become a member, and visit us in person as soon as it is possible to view Szukalski's creations for yourself up close. We are waiting for you.